Hi friends! Welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda May and this is my channel Artith Design where we celebrate counted cross stitch, sustainable stitching, and making all the things. If you are new, welcome and if you were returning, I am so happy that you are back with me to celebrate all things counted cross stitch. I am so excited this week. I have so much to show you, so much to talk about. Ugh all the things. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a question and answer regarding needlework. We're going to do needleworkers in the news, which is my new little segment I want to do. <laughs> we're going to talk sustainable stitching in relation to quilting and sewing and all the things thread, right? <laughs> and then I'm going to show you my works in progress. And then we're going to have a fun little guessing game slash giveaway prize package entering sweepstakes thingy that we're going to talk about. So let's get started talking about counted cross stitch. I love it so much. Okay. I took notes. I have everything ready. I got some questions uh, this last week that I want to make sure that I have cleared up. Number one is how do you order your patterns? Well, that is an excellent question. My patterns are available on my website, which is artithdesign.com. And I use a platform called Gumroad, which is a secure platform for creatives. Several influential and fun <laughs> cross stitch designers are also using it. And I know Fiddlesticks AU down in Australia and Ryan of Wild Violet Cross Stitch also has a platform on Gumroad. I have linked my Gumroad to my .com website so you're securely checking out. You can either use your credit card or use your PayPal to pay. I'm, I'm just not on Etsy and that is a personal choice for me at this time. I have the features on Gumroad are pretty interesting. I have like a zero plus option, which means if you enter zero, you can get a pattern for free or name a fair price above zero and you can enter that in. Conversely, or in, in addition, sorry. <laughs> in addition to that, I have had some questions about my new patterns, the Count the Saucers, which all of you have been so kind about. Count the Saucers here and Count the Cups. My, the questions have been, how do I order it? I try to put it in my cart and nothing happens. Well, I did a special thing with mine and I wanted to try it out. And I'm sorry if it's caused confusion. I have on there $4.99, so $4.99 um, United States currency. And then there's a plus sign, which means that it is not a free pattern. You have to at least manually enter $4.99 in order to get the pattern but say you feel the pattern is worth more than $5, you can go ahead and enter six, seven, eight, nine, ten dollars You could, if you, if you believe my pattern is worth $100, you could put 100 in there. I put it in place like that because a lot of people say that artists, we don't value our work enough. Some say we value our work too much. I mean, it's all over the place. I, I set my baseline price at five you can put that or, or more. So I hope that didn't cause any confusion. I know that the model is a little different than other artists and cross stitch designers out there. And I'm sorry if I caused any confusion, uh, but I appreciate all of you who have purchased the patterns. They are only on PDF right now. I'm hoping later in the year <laughs> to be able to have them available in paper form my printer, my printing capabilities in Maryland are still down due to the stay at home order. And my books that I have published through Amazon Publishing, they had shut down their US printing for the last six weeks and they just now opened it up in the last couple of days for my patterns to be printed and my books to be printed again. So there has been a little bit of a time delay and I'm sorry for that. And just know that I appreciate you. All right, the next question I have is, will there be more red samplers in the Counter Cups and Saucers series? And the answer is yes. And here comes the giveaway sweepstakes question portion of this. So 
I have decided that I have the two patterns here, both of which fit in the five by seven frames. And what I'm gonna do is there's gonna be one more that's oriented like this in a vertical and one more that's oriented in a horizontal. So there'll be four patterns all together, all kitchen, play on words, fun with the English language theme. As you see the saucers, there's flying saucers, there's the unidentified aerial phenomenon, and then there's tea and saucers here. And then the same here with the cups, there's well, all the things, all the different types of cups, coffee cups, soda cups, tea cups, <laughs> all the cups. So that here's, here's the fun part. Okay. <laughs> all right. You guess what's next in my sam my red sampler series, the petite red sampler series, and you will be entered to win a prize package. And yes, I'm keeping it a little bit of a sh secret and hopefully next week we can talk about it a little bit more. So here is your clue to be entered. All of the standard floss tube giveaway rules apply. Please be 18 in order to give me your mailing address. I would love it if you were a subscriber to my channel and I would love it if you comment below. Commenting below enters you into the sweepstakes giveaway challenge. All right, are you ready? Here's your clue for my next sampler. Okay, <laughs> so much fun. Okay, the next question I have is, uh, Amanda May, are you missing your doing your save the stitches since you haven't been able to leave your house in the last couple of months? And the answer is yes, I have been missing going out to thrift stores and finding and rescuing needlework, but I have been doing a form of sustainable stitching. And here I wanted to talk about, I have a collection of vintage sheets, flat sheets, fitted sheets. Here is an example. This is like a pretty cute little, I don't know, springtime sheet. I, it's been cleaned and I decided to start cutting it up and using it as fabric. And I wanna show you what I decided to do. A couple weeks ago, months ago, I showed you that I started my rainbow quilt blocks and this is a pattern by Crafter Hours and it's called like the little giant rainbow quilt. <laughs> and I got really excited. I did a couple blocks and then I started making more of the triangles to make the rainbow. Well, then I got a little, I went a little bit overboard <laughs> with my triangles and I'm using scraps because I've been making a lot of masks. So I had a bunch of scraps and then I decided to start making stuff up to make, eventually make a quilt. So I cut up squares of the sheets to use in conjunction with this. So I've got two of these squares I've cut out I think I got 30 triangles all together and there's the pieces of the sheet. So if you are without fabric or you've used up a lot of your stash, just think about if you have like flat sheets that maybe you don't use because you have a duvet cover or it's now approaching summertime or what, for whatever reason. If you've got sheets that are maybe fitted sheets that the elastic has gone out and you don't want to fix it because you're using your elastic for other things, you have a lot of fabric available potentially in your sheets. And yes, a lot of sheets are polyester or flannel and, but there's so much that you can make and do and repurpose with sheets that are around your house. So that is my sustainable stitching tip for this week. I don't know what, how this is going to turn out. I might cut up some more stuff. I don't know. <laughs> I'm excited though. I've been quilting a lot which has been a nice a little bit uh, of a reprieve for me. And my son, who is two, he's gonna be three next month, loves to help me press the pedal on the sewing machine. Oh, and by the way, I don't have an actual tattoo that's a temporary tattoo because thank you my, to my children, they're just like glow in the dark and dinosaurs because who doesn't need glow in the dark dinosaur temporary tattoos? <laughs> okay. 
Is that all my questions? Yes, those are all my questions. All right. The next little bit is my new section called Needle Workers in the News. I firmly believe that we all can lift each other up. It's not a competition. I praise all of the artists, designers, all of you out there doing amazing things. And why don't we highlight and give a round of applause and congratulate and thank and shout out the creators in this community. So I wanted, I picked out three people to shout out today. And please, if you are a floss tube video maker, or if you're a watcher of my channel and want to do a shout out on Instagram or on social media too, for needle workers in the news, or, you know, shouting out, <laughs> celebrating the creators and stitchers around the world. Here, I, I decided, <laughs> Here are the three that I am shouting out this week. Number one, from Needlework Press, I want to shout out Vicky. She was recently published in this month's or last, the, the new issue of Tea Time Magazine. I will have the link for the magazine below. She wrote a beautiful article that I read and it's titled uh, Tea off of, the, uh, off of the Beaten Path. So Tea Off the Beaten Path. So that again from Needlework Press, she wrote a beautiful article in Tea Time Magazine. You should check that out. Number two is Liz Matthews. I want to shout her out. Uh, hello from Liz Matthews. She did a beautiful new sampler, a uh, beautiful piece uh, highlighting hot air balloons, which hello, if you're new to my channel, I love hot air balloons. They're my jam. Not only did she create a new pattern highlighting the history of hot air balloons of 1783 when they were launched in France, but she also created a pattern using two different colored linen fabrics to create dimension in her piece. And I say a round of applause for creating and celebrating uh, new ways of integrating new techniques in needlework or highlighting previous techniques that maybe we haven't talked about in a while. So awesome, Liz Matthews, round of applause. And third is, I wanna highlight Heartstring Samplery, Beth Twist, and her hilarious G is for gallbladder pattern available for PDF download over on kittenstitcher.com's website under her Cats for stash for cats and dogs fundraiser for five dollars. You can get G is for gallbladder, and it's like the anatomy alphabet anatomy series. Hilarious! I, if you're new to my channel, don't know if you know this, but early March I had my gallbladder removed right before the stay at home issue was in effect. So I've ha I had surgery. I've been home. Haven't left since. G is for gallbladder. <laughs> So I guess that's a double mention there, uh, both Beth and Teresa for the calm bladder. <laughs> so that's my needle workers in the news. I will have the stuff linked below. All right, should we move on to whips or haul? Let's do, let's do whips, okay. I am so excited. I am a huge fan of Barbara Anna Designs. She is a designer. She is from Spain or she currently lives in Spain. So she is, you can find her designs. She's in like punch needle and primitive stitcher. You can find her stuff on creative poppy. But the two designs I'm about to show you were her complimentary designs for the hashtag be well and stitch. You can find those designs on her Instagram, like in her drop, drop box to download for free. And the first one I've worked on this week is the key and it is a goose and boy, oh boy, is it adorable. I am stitching mine on a 28 count cashel linen by Silk Weaver and it is called Blue Caribbean. I actually looked at the at the paper this time so I could tell y'all what fabric I was actually stitching on. I know, and yes, 
everything is wrinkled. I'm perpetually disheveled because I stitch in hand and <laughs> some days I iron and some days I don't. And today was not that day. So the tag here, let me see. Yeah, Blue Caribbean, Deep Caribbean, Cash Shell 18 or 28 count. I, I, yes, Silk Weaver Cash Shell 28 count, Deep Caribbean. And I love this color. It's bright and beautiful. I need to finish this up, cut it out. So I have another piece of linen that I can stitch on. And I am so excited for her. I did a complete color conversion. Well, I don't want to say complete. I did a, a very extensive color conversion. The one she does have DMC that 783, which is that like brownish color. She uses that color a lot in most of her patterns. So I already had several of her colors pulled from her mermaid series and the Halloween stuff I'm working on. I have Sulky. The cheek here is done with the Adobe color and cotton that I got. It's DMC Sulky. This is Parchment by Victorian Mono Sampler Shop. Yeah, so apparently all the colors, I'm using all of them. And they're kind of all kind of scattered in there in my bag that my two-year-old helped me sew. And it, I love it. I am very happy. I am almost done. I just have to do this, finish off the flower crown and then this section here I need to finish here. And then she will be all done. And I'm so excited. I do not know how I am going to finish her yet. I want to just put her in a frame, but I am running low on frames and supplies. I know, shock, but I am. So we'll, <laughs> I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with her. My next project, again, Barbara Anna, is her complimentary The Light, The Fox. Love it. And I am doing a combination of the Sulky Conversion by Michelle Garrett, her her conversion and then what I didn't have because apparently I have stashed some of my silky spools in other places that I cannot find whoops a daisy so <laughs> I substituted my rationale though I'm saying is well I'm using the kitten stitcher chickpea fabric and so I had to change some of the colors so <laughs> here she is I literally did one row not a whole lot of progress on her, but progress nonetheless. I wanted to show her off because I love her. And I am equally excited. So this is the same piece of fabric. If you're new, I kind of have a thing. I get nervous about cutting my fabric until the very end because I'm afraid, even if I calculate and I calculate again, I'm afraid that I will be off in my margins. So I decided on this piece of fabric to build my house on the other side. Yes, my house I am working on and it is for Plum Street Samplers. Oh, I love it. This is the first red house I've ever built and I love it. And it's the Sweetheart Hill that was released at Market. I am very excited. This is being, this is stitched on 36 count chickpea and it was her limited edition. I'm not sure if she's going to to die, if she's going to die any more of these, this color, but I really like it. So thanks to you all last time, she's going to be chickpea the fox and this is Sweetheart Hill on Chickpea Mountain. <laughs> I love it. Okay. And so again, I love this so much. I need to pull my colors, what I'm going to be doing, the green, my hill, and I've got to finish the door and the windows, but I'm going to move on to the flowers and the hill. So I got to pull my colors. I just pulled my red for this, which is the, um, I have the big spool of it. It's actually called Red Work, and it's the 4042. And it's got like purple and red hint. And to me, it, I think it makes it look like a weathered red. And I, I really like it. So that's the big spool that I'm using for that. Someone asked me how much you get in it. It's 330 yards on this. 
And then the petite spools, I think it's like 50 yards. Yeah, 50 yards, like difference in size. So that's my second Barbara Anna. And then the third piece that I worked on this week, and <laughs> a couple of you commented that, and they're like, wow, this pit, that piece is bigger than I thought it was. Uh, the Cricut Collection Skeleton Crew. I, I have jokingly said it's on my five-year plan to finish. <laughs> oh, I finished this last week, and then, so this is a progress that I made this week on the sale. So again, I am not even, I'm almost to the face of this sale. I got to go up and then I got to go up again and get that flag up there. So as you can see, this is going to be a big project. I'm really excited though. I, my favorite, ho my favorite holidays are Valentine's Day, Halloween, and Christmas or the, all of December really. <laughs> so I, I love Halloween stuff, so I'm excited to get this done. So those are my works in progress. Ah! All right, the next thing I wanna talk about is my haul. I decided to buy some things. I had a little bit of retail therapy, and so here I wanna show you. The first thing I got, I was inspired by, again, Liz Matthews. I picked up this carnival glass. It's a, a frog to hold scissors, but I really liked her finish of the tree, her tree finishes in the flower frogs. So I picked up one of these. Again, this is a carnival glass and I found it on eBay. I'm saying it's cross stitch related and I think it's really pretty. So I grabbed that. And then the second thing I grabbed is a replacement of my grubby wog. Did I use up all of this ribbon already? Yes. Did I use it on the Lindy Stitches pattern? No, no, I didn't. Ex school friend is what inspired this colorway. This is by Lady Dot Creates. This is by Lindy Stitches, Stephanie Webb. If you are new to my channel, I fangirl other floss tubers really hard. Yeah, so. I did the contest for the the ex the ex school friend and I won. Thank you, Stephanie. And with that, I got the grubby wog. And that's a pug. It's okay. And I used all of my grubby wog to finish a release for the holidays and the holiday is not Halloween. So I'm excited for you all to see that later this year. So I, I had to order a replacement of that. And because trams cannot travel alone, no, they cannot. I got the bit bag of bits. Brenda and the cereal starter their channel they talk about like getting really like twitter pated like getting really excited about samplers threads floss all the things lady dot creates lois posted on instagram the bag of bits and my heart started like rapidly beating i got really excited she said she only had 10 bags so i raced over to etsy and i bought it i haven't even opened it up to go through it all but I am so excited and I think I see some grubby wog in there. Yeah, I'm excited. So <laughs> trim gets me Twitter pated. I gotta calm myself down. All right, so those were the two things I got. And then the third thing I got was not as exciting, but I, I've used up a lot of my fabric of making masks and all the things. So I decided instead of just using Ziploc bags, which are totally fine, Ziploc bags are fine, but I impulse bought these bags and they're like document bags. 
so they don't have the clear vinyl front they're just utilitarian they're fun I think I might like put a little like maybe an iron-on patch on it and put some of my projects in here so I got it was a five pack I gave my husband the, the black one for work and then I my my idea was I have these lanyard things you know like when you go to conferences and you wear that's like got the plastic with a little thingy so I think what I'm gonna do is attach these here and I'll either um, print out a, a little piece that show uh, print out a thumbnail not a thumbnail a small version of what the piece is so I know what's in the bag because I can't see through it or I might just use and I pulled out the late where did I put them I had them here somewhere these like name badge labels and then just write what the project is so I don't forget so I have a collection of these like the little you know what these are like I, I could wear this and say Amanda May artist design fangirl to all the floss tube channels hi so that's my little thing I wanted to, to show you the haul on um, I wanted to also say that I checked and these, this metal thing, these are still available. These came out in the late eighties, early nineties. I thought that they were discontinued. They are not. So I use this and it holds my patterns and you can use your magnets and stuff to help hold up everything. So I wanted to say these are, and I, I have the link for them below. And shout out to everyone using your binders going through I'm like what am I gonna stitch next so I think I told you all my barrack you know stitch all the barracks so I wanted to say thank you to Abby Bella stitch she she let me know that Kathy barrack she did carriage house samplings samplers uh barrack samplers now she's just under Kathy barrack but she also had a company called chart makers I did not know that so uh and something uh, you learn every day so I have all of this. I want to start Tis Halloween and I really like, I have, I have, I have, I have too many wonderful things. The owls. All the things. I want to start all the things. The only new start I've had in May was the Remember Me by Birds of a Feather. I haven't done any progress on it or else I would have shown you, but oh my gosh, I am so excited for all the things. Have I talked about everything? Oh, my Venice Poppy House release from last week. I told you all that it had the thread drop printable. So what you just do is you can print the, the printable out on 110, at least 110 pound paper, which is like the thick like cardstock paper. And you can obviously print it on thicker paper, thinner paper. It won't like hold up as much and then I just use like fancy little the thingies you don't have to use stars you can use the circles you can just use the hole punch I couldn't find my other little hole punch and these are those the really fun rings the Diana it is kismet rings I feel like I'm doing gadget corner right now <laughs> organize all your needlework supplies so anyway uh I want to thank you all for your comments and I got several questions People reach out to me saying, where do you buy your DMC? I got all of these at Michael's Crafts before, I wouldn't say like last year, late last year. And this is the Colorist, which is their variegated and it's number um, 4514. And the, the colorway is called Venice. Hence the reason my sampler is called Venice Poppy House. And Again, I got these all at Michael's. You can check with your local needlework shop if they carry DMC and they carry the, the DMC Colaris colors. I, I want to say that if you can support your local needlework shop, absolutely do it. But I, I know that many of them do not, do not carry the full line of DMC floss because they can, it's not economically viable for them to do so. What do I mean by that? Okay, 
big box stores have the economic, they have the buying power to order huge quantities of DMC and be able to offer them at affordable pricing. For instance, Joann's Fabrics had DMC at 56 cents a skein. And then they have usually on sale, so then they're 20% off because they're able to buy huge, like huge volumes of DMC. A local needle workshop may only be able to buy like a pack of 12 in a box at a time. Their buying power is significantly lower, so they ha might have to list their DMC at 75 cents or a dollar 29. So for them, a dollar 29 for a skein of DMC when Michaels carries it for 52 cents or carry the over dyed variegated flosses that they buy sp small batch by artisanal dyers, color and cotton, weeks dye works, uh, classic color works, gentle art, where that the skeins start at, you know, $2 and 40 cents a skein. So they're more likely to invest in the smaller overdyed, and I don't mean smaller, like insignificant, I just mean like more artisanal. So if you can find the DMC at your LNS, awesome. And if not, please know that all of these I did get at a big box store. The Colaris was a little bit more expensive because it was variegated. I think just the, the base color here were like 52 cents and the Colaris was like 129, 159 and then you use your coupon. I am not sponsored in any way by any thread company. And that is another thing that I wanted to say. Um, please know that if you want to change your colors, if you like my charts, but you don't like the colors that I have picked, please change colors, change fabrics, change, make it your own. I buy my stuff retail. Everything that I stitch with, I've, <laughs> I've purchased. So again, that goes back to buying power. And you might say, Amanda May, you could have used a better green. Why did you use this green? You could have used that green. You are absolutely right. I could have. However, I didn't have it in my personal collection when I went to down and purchased it retail. So I'm just throwing that out there. You can, by all means, change around my colors. The only thing I ask as a cross-stitch designer is, you know, don't share my charts. And I feel like that's fair, right? <laughs> anyway, I want to thank all of you for joining me this week. It's been a beautiful week. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down below or you can private message me. I absolutely love this community. It's been so much fun. If you would like me to shout you out in the needleworkers of the news in the news and we can do a collective round of applause reach out to me. I might not have known that you've started a new thing or you've been recently published or that your book is, you know, number one on cross-stitch charts. That's Emma Congdon, by the way, and her cross-stitch for the soul. Hello. Yes, please. So let me know. I want to thank all of you. you. Remember that you matter, your stitching matters, and I will see you soon. Take care.